You make a ton of money at it. Yeah, you know the song. I'm talking baseball, baseball in St. Lou. That was the one we remember. Of course, every city had their own. So Terry Cashman, before he did Talking Baseball, was a producer for Jim Croce. Now, when Croce and Ingrid developed or discovered that they were going to have a child, Croce just said, okay, I'm going to be more determined than ever to make it in the music profession. So he sent a cassette of his new song to a friend and producer in New York City in the hope that he'd get a record deal. When their son AJ was born in September 1971, Ingrid decided to become a stay-at-home mom to raise the kid, and Jim went on the road to promote his music. Croce signed a three-record contract with ABC, releasing two albums, Don't Mess Around with Jim, Life and Times. I'm sorry, two albums, You Don't Mess Around with Jim, and The Life and Times. The singles, Don't Mess Around with Jim, Operator, Time in a Bottle, all received airplay. Also that year, the Croches moved to San Diego, California. Croce began appearing on television, including the national debut, his national debut on American Bandstand in August uh, in, in August of that year, the Tonight Show on August, American Bandstand August 12th, Tonight Show on August 14th, Dick Cavett on September 20th and 21st. So a little more than two months, he had four appearances on national talk circuits, the national talk show circuit. Now, Croce began touring the United States with Mullinson and performing in large coffee houses, college campuses, and folk festivals. However, his financial situation remained precarious, and that's because the record company had fronted him all this money to record. And now when he's earning all the money, the record company said, nah, okay, I know you're popular, I know you're bringing in a ton of dough, but here's the bills that are coming due for all the recording that we fronted you. So in other words, Croce was still making no money because that's the way the record companies do it, or did it. I don't know if they do it that way anymore or not. They front you all this money, and they say, ah, don't worry about it, you'll become popular. And when they do, they say, oh, read the fine print. You have to pay all this fronted money back. So while Croce had a number one hit and was touring, he still wasn't making any money. February 1973, Croce and Mullinson traveled to Europe, performing in London, Paris, Amsterdam, Monte Carlo, Zurich, and Dublin, received positive reviews. He made television appearances on The Midnight Special. He co-hosted on on June 15th and The Helen Reddy Show. Remember that? That was on July 19th of that year. Croce's biggest single, Bad Bad Leroy Brown, reached number one on the American charts in July of that year, 1973. So his his first number one hit hit number one in July. He was dead by September. Now, from July the 16th through August the 4th, Croce and Mullinson returned to London and performed on the Old Grey Whistle Test. That was a London thing. That was a UK thing. I've never heard of that. You probably never have either. But they sang Lover's Cross and Work in the Car Wash Blues. That was from their upcoming album, I Got a Name, that had not yet been released. Croce finished recording the album just a week before his death. Now, while on tour, he grew increasingly homesick and decided to take a break from music and settle in with Ingrid and AJ when his Life and Times tour ended. In fact, and this is this is hauntingly, hauntingly true, in a letter to Ingrid, which arrived after his death, so he wrote it, mailed it, died, it arrived to Ingrid in that order. Croce told Ingrid that he decided to quit music and stick to writing short stories and music scripts as a career and he was going to withdraw from public life. He just wanted to settle down with his wife and son and write music. Or write music scripts, I'm sorry, not music. Now, the night of Thursday, September 20th, 1973, during Croce's Life and Times tour, and the day before his ABC single, I Got a Name, was released, Croce and all five others on board were killed when their chartered Beechcraft E-18S crashed into a tree during takeoff from the Nacogdoches Regional Airport in Nacogdoches, Louisiana. Croce was 30 years old. Others killed in the crash were the pilot, Robert Elliott, Croce's bandmate, Marty Mullinson, Mullinson, uh, comedian George Stevens, he was the opening act for George, for Jim Croce, uh, manager and booking agent Kevin Catorce, and road manager 
Dennis Rast. Now, an hour before the crash, Croce had completed a concert at Northwestern State University at Prather's at the Prather Coliseum in Nacogdoches. He was then flying to Sherman, Texas for a concert at Austin College. An investigation by the NTSB named the probable cause of the of the plane crash pirate fa- pilot failure. The pilot failed to see an obstruction due to physical impairment because of extreme fog reduced his vision. The 57-year-old Elliot suffered from severe coronary artery disease and had run three miles to the airport from a motel just before the flight. He had an ATP certificate, over 14,000 hours of total flight time, over 2,100 hours in the Beach 18-type aircraft. Now, a later investigation placed the sole blame on pilot air because of the downwind takeoff into a black hole of severe darkness, limiting the use of visual references. Kroesch was born at Heim Solomon Memorial Park in Fraser, Pennsylvania. Now, Kroesch had a huge legacy. The album I Got a Name was released on December the 1st, 1973. By that time, Croce had become a posthumous god. Now, the posthumous release of three other hits, Working in the Car Wash Blues, I Have to Say I Love You in a Song, and the title song I Got a Name, which had been used in the film The Last American Hero, that was released two months prior to his death. The film, the single, the day after his death. The album reached number two, and I'll have to say I love you in a song reached number nine on the singles charts. Now, while ABC had not originally released the song Time in a Bottle as a single, Croce's untimely death gave its lyrics dealing with mortality and the wish to have more time an additional renaissance. The song subsequently received a large amount of airplay as an album track and demand for a single release built. <clears throat> When it was released, it became his second and final number one hit. After the single had finished a two-week run at the top, January 1974, the album You Don't Mess Around With Jim became number one for five weeks, all after his death. Now, a greatest hits album entitled Photographs and Memories was released in 1974. Later posthumous releases have included Home Recordings, Americana, The Faces I've Been, Jim Croce Classic Hits, Down the Highway, and uh, also Croce's television performances, Have You Heard Jim Croce Live. In 1990, Croce was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Now, in 2012, Ingrid Croce published a memoir about Croce entitled I Got a Name, The Jim Croce Story. In 1985, Ingrid Croce opened, opened Croce's Restaurant and Jazz Bar, a project her and Jim had jokingly discussed over a decade earlier, and that was in the historic gas lamp quarter of downtown San Diego. She owned and managed it until it closed end of December 2013. I've been there. It was a nice bar, a nice club, a nice pub. Now, in December 2013, she opened Crochet's Crochet's Park West on 5th Avenue on Bankers Hill neighborhood near Balboa Park. She closed that restaurant in 2016. You never know when your time comes. Here's a guy, Jim Croce, worked his whole life, was just beginning, just beginning to realize success. And he gets on an airplane, and the airplane runs into a tree. Life is so precious. Jim Croce's music, I mean, it remains very popular today. He was just a guy, him and Marty Millinson, play guitars, sing songs. That's all they did. It was nothing fancy about his music, but there was certainly something special about his music. I enjoy doing these, these, the the fill-in-the-blank-you-never-knew podcasts because most everybody has heard of Jim Croce. Most everybody listened to this podcast, especially those that are probably 50 and older. Those younger than that, yeah, you've probably heard them, but you didn't know much about them. And I guarantee that most of you, in fact, virtually all of you, even the older generation out there like me, did not know the backstory to Jim Croce. As I I investigate, read about the backstories to these people, to these artists, 
quite often they're just common guys and gals who have a special talent and most important, get a special break and become special people to entertain us in a special way. Well, that's it. I'm done. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. James Strong Show at Hotmail.com. That's the email address. You send me your email address. I will send you the link to the podcast upon publication. You can then download it and listen to it at your leisure. If you don't want to do that, that's cool. Just go ahead and go to any place you get podcasts. iHeartRadio, uh, Spotify, Apple iTunes, any, any place you get your podcasts. Podbean. Listen to any any of those and, and you'll 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 just search James Strong Show and there I am. Listen to it, enjoy, and send me emails. I do respond and I enjoy getting the feedback. Well, that's it. I'm done. Until next time, this is James Strong saying adios.